Welcome back. So it's been a while since I last did an update of the Greenberg PC. So I think now is the time that we go over what I have slab-wise, since you've already seen some of the raw, um, of a lot of the Greenberg cards. This will not include modern cards for the most part. There may be a few to start off, but most of the raw, most of the modern cards are raw and memorabilia cards. That's a completely separate video. This we're going to focus on slabs. You've seen the stuff that I want to get slabbed. Now you're going to see the stuff that's already slabbed. So starting off, we're going to go from newest to oldest. We have a cut auto here of a later signature. A cut auto from a 19 late 30s early 40s signature a 2020 issue and a 2017 issue of two different leaf products the collection has grown to say the least since the last video so we're gonna try and do two at a time here you have from 2015 a one of one 1939 Tigers so a nice early Greenberg sig on there so to do a period piece for that one of my favorite cards is the nickel from 2003 Topps Gallery Hall of Fame I have a bunch of these raw as well Next up, 2001 Topps Tribute. We'll back card in a five. We have 81 Detroit News Auto. And auto grade of 10 on that. Cards of seven. We have 1978 issue. And we actually have two of these, depending on the slab you like. You PSA and Beckett. I mess up the slabs as I put them off to the side. Here we have the 1978 Playboy Press issue. This is not signed. I do have a signed one I gotta get slabbed. As you've seen, we have 1972 Hank Greenberg, Lou Boudreau, and Hal Newhauser. This is all autographed on a 1972 MVP card. So interesting one there. 1970 Fleer Auto, smudged auto, but still there nineteen sixty three Kitav publishing in a PSA ten nineteen sixty one scoops Greenberg returns to Tigers from Army this is a six but fun little card We have a few of these, or a couple of these raw, or in slabs. I think we have a couple raw as well. 1961 Golden Press, Hank Greenberg. One is in a four, and one is in an eight. And the eight was actually sent to me very kindly by a subscriber. Here's Greenberg as an executive with the Cleveland Indians. 1955 Golden Stamps and a 7. Nice little autograph here. Red ink auto on newspaper clipping. It was a GM. We got a few clippings actually. That's Greenberg with his son, also in red ink. Greenberg in a Pittsburgh uniform and black ink. 
looks like that's probably late 47 if not 48 when that clipping is from let's do 1948 or 346 blue tint and Greenberg cutout these have gone up quite a bit in price next up incredibly difficult card Propaganda Montiel, so Cuban issue, Hank Greenberg from 4647, and uh, SGC2, really good looking SGC2. <coughs> from 1946, Philadelphia A's, Detroit Tigers, Hank Greenberg's 285th home run. Ticket. And we start with the 43s. So, of this particular variation, we have three different ones. We have one that's simply authentic, one that's in a one and a half, and one that's in a five and a half. And this particular back just has outfield for the 43 MP and Co. And then for this particular version, which I'll show you the back of this, has outfielder Detroit Tigers. We have this one in a one, this one in a four. So obviously two copies of that particular card. Next up, we have a nice little run of 41 play ball. A little collection here. We have starting from the top PSA 1, an SGC 3, PSA 5, PSA 6, and PSA 7. These cards have also climbed quite a bit in value. It's a nice little run of 41 play balls. These are all the standard issue do not have the paper one uh, in a slab yet but that will be forthcoming as soon as it is slabbed next up we have 41 double play this is cards 85 and 86 we have three copies of this this being picked up just recently. So you have BVG two and a half, PSA three, PSA four and a half. And no, I did not spend $200 on that card. So Greenberg Red Roughing, double play. From that same set, Greenberg actually also has another card. I have three copies of this one as well. Authentic because of a very beat up back. It's pasted somewhere. A one and a half and a five with a mark. The mark being of, above Buck Newsom. So and this is cards number 51 and 52 of the set. Now we go back a little bit to 1940 Detroit Tigers Greenberg home run number 234 so prior to his military service and now we get into the 40 play balls we have a nice little variety of these kind of 
don't realize how many you have until you put them all in front of you. Starting from the top, we have one in SGC 2.5, PSA 2.5, SGC 3.5, SGC 4, or sorry, PSA 4, PSA 4.5, SGC 4.5, and, and a PSA 6. So various grades on 1940 play ball. Alright, moving on to 1939 samples. We have two that are in slabs. The first one is a PSA 3, and then we have a PSA 6. So you can notice the condition on the front, and you notice the clarity of the stamp on the back. So, fun little cards there. That's the rarest of the three variations. The second most difficult is the uppercase, lowercase back. And we have one and one and a half, a four, and a four. With three different slabs. Oh, what fun! And we'll stop and take a break for a minute while we look at this particular beauty. The card itself is a 1, the auto is an 8, on a 39 play ball, all caps back. And that is the highlight of the this particular card, along with the one right next to it. This is probably the most prevalent Greenberg on the market. I'm going to take away the auto for a second, and we'll adjust things, so we can get all eight of these on the screen, or attempt to. So you have the auto, and then you have a two with a mark, three PSA, three from SGC, four from PSA, four from SGC, 5 from PSA, 5 from SGC, and an 8 from B, uh, Beckett. So you notice the little variations as well with these particular cards. Some have a much darker picture, such as this example and this example, and some have a much, much lighter picture. This one and this one being pretty good um, examples of that particular lightness in the photo. So, it's a development issue. Thankfully, the one that's signed has the darker photo and more details. So, that is the Hall of 39 Play Ball All Caps Back version. So, now when the 30s, we're getting to slightly pricier Greenberg cards. 39 is the most mass produced. 38 is incredibly tough. And I have two versions of the 38 Gaudi heads up with the illustrations in the back. Obviously, one and a half and a four. I'm going to go with these two. Kind of making nice little sets here. I have three of the blank background. I have a one, a one and a half, and a four and a half. Four and a half being an absolutely stunning example of the card. So those are the 1938 Gaudi. This is card number 277. This is card number 253. Well, those of you find them at a good price, definitely pick them up. Because there's only one direction those prices are going. 
One of the more recent editions, and one I've been trying to get for quite some time, 1937 OPG. This one is PSA 4, and got this, I believe, for a steal. <clears throat> now we have a 1936 ticket here. And this is an earlier game because Greenberg was injured in 36, the vast majority of 36. So he only played in the early games. And this being April 19th was before his broken wrist. Next up, another very hard one I was finally able to get. 1936 Worldwide Gum. This is an SGC one and a half, and I am absolutely okay with that. Still a clean card, a little bit of creasing, but really just happy to have an example of this card in the collection. Next up, we have quite a few 1936 Gaudis as I throw slabs all over the place. So this is just one variation of the Foul double back and a two, a four, a four, and a five. One of the fours I picked up just recently. That is the most common back that you will find. We have the out error back and a five. We have the foul and ball back and a five. We have the foul tip and strike back, which is also in a four. We have ball and out back and one and a half, a little bit harder to get there. We have the strike and wild pitch variation with a pinhole and a one. Unfortunately, one of the recent videos, you know, this being a one, which is why I picked up a raw version of the card. So this, even though it's not in the greatest shape, is still an upgrade from one with a pinhole. That particular, this particular back is incredibly hard to find. So those are the 36 Gaudis. Now we'll go into the 35 Gaudi 4 and one this, there's no Greenberg on the front. Greenberg is only on the back from Tiger's team photo. But for these, we have four of the 9F Hank Greenberg 4 and 1. And 9F is basically tells you what back is on there. Is Myers and the three copies we have here are three, five, and six. And also another back of that same card is the eight F. I have that in a five and a half. Now let's get into some ones that are a little bit more money. So here is the 35 Diamond Stars error card. So Greenberg is spelled B-E-R-G normally, correctly. And, but on this card, before they've corrected the error, it was B-U-R-G. Now this one has three with a little mark on it, which I am okay with. Still a great example of this card and very hard to find these days. As for the corrected version, I have a few copies. These are all of the corrected version of the card. From left to right, we have a PSA 3, a BBG 3.5, which I picked up not long ago, PSA 4, 
and SGC5. Prices of the 35 Diamond Stars cards have gone up quite a bit. Next up, we have some 34, well, 35 batter up. And we have four in slabs. So three different colors of the four color rainbow. We've already seen some of the other ones I have raw at the moment. So starting off from left to right, we have a blue in a one, a blue in a PSA seven, which is incredibly hard to get. We have a sepia in a 1.5 and a black in a 2.5. So really nice variety on these. There's also the pink version, which I have raw, just not in a slab yet. And now we get to the interesting ones. But before I show the cards many of you have been waiting for, I'll show you a couple interesting ones. So here we have a 1933 New York Yankees Detroit Tigers game ticket. This is Hank Greenberg's first game at Yankee Stadium, his seventh career start. And it's actually a really high grade for a ticket, especially at that age. Uh, PSA 6. So, great ticket. And then we have the autograph of Harry Albert Davis. And if you don't know who he is, you're not the only one. This is a guy Greenberg replaced at first base for the Detroit Tigers. Because the interesting thing with Greenberg is, growing up in the Bronx, the Yankees actually wanted to sign him. But Greenberg looked at the Yankees and saw that first base was occupied by a gentleman by the name of Lou Gehrig. Uh, so he opted not to sign with the Yankees. Instead, the Tigers came along. And their first baseman didn't quite live up to Gehrig. Harry Davis, he could replace. And so he decided to sign with the Tigers. So these are the cards that have really taken off lately. That is the 1934 Gowdy Hank Greenberg rookie card. I'm very, very fortunate to have three of these in slabs, one of the, and one card that has to be um, slabbed up, but it's a trimmed version. So these are the top three. We have a one and a half, a three with a mark, and a straight up three. All these have gone way up in price lately. Um, have priced me out of the market. I can't buy any more Greenberg rookies. Um, but really great cards great rookie card and also a fantastic way to end this Greenberg collection review so hope you enjoyed a review of the Greenberg slabs since you saw the raw cards before now you see what I'm dealing with uh, with cards that are already slabbed up um, the collection has grown quite significantly um, both through quite a bit of luck um, some persistence and a great deal of help from a lot of really fantastic people. Um, been very, very fortunate to pick a lot of these up from tips, from people have had them and have offered, offered them to me. I've really, really been happy. Um, and I've tried to reciprocate that assistance. So it's been a fantastic run. I will continue adding to this collection, maybe not as uh, intensely as I have been um, in recent months, but filling in gaps where I need to fill in gaps, um, and maybe a few larger items, a few exhibit cards that I'm missing, um, maybe an upgrade, maybe a trade here and there, um, which there is a trade on the horizon. Involves one or two of the cards you've seen in this particular video. But as for another video, another day, 
but it should be quite fun moving forward I'm enjoying the ride so far I'm enjoying the the community that's there um, and my fellow Greenberg collectors and I'm just gonna keep going with the flow and having fun with the more focused collection um, especially adding to the Greenberg run um, so that's what I got for you this time around and until next time please remember to collect what you enjoy enjoy what you collect and don't let anybody especially the market or youtuber dictate that to you and most importantly have fun and have fun by being active in this community so find your way of participating whether it's making videos watching and commenting going to live streams group chats going to LCS or local card show or simply talking about the hobby with family and friends the more you put into it the more you'll get out of it the more you'll learn the more your PC will grow the more people you'll meet and the more fantastic friendships you'll form so I thank you very much for joining me hope to see you again have a good one and bye for now